Hello everyone, thank you for joining me and welcome to my channel. And in this video, as I've had it for over 12 months, I thought it was time I gave my opinion on this. Yep, that's right, it's my Vevor 2.2 kilowatt watt-cooled spindle. And for those of you who came here just for the conclusion or indeed to watch me go through various tests, cutting different materials to explain how well it does or doesn't do, Whilst I will show some previous videos running in the background while I'm going through my little opinion piece, I don't intend to show any specific test while I'm doing this. Just to let you know, it's a great value, affordable, general purpose, high speed CNC spindle. That's it, that's all you need to know. So thank you for watching, see you again soon, take care. And for the rest of you, here's my opinions. I'll quickly point out this is my own opinion, I have no connection with Vevor or anyone else for the affiliation purposes. Now, when we started out, we just did aluminium. We did our own products and nothing else and just got stuck into that and that was it. As things have gone on, we've added uh, other materials to our lineup and also undertaken a lot of uh, third-party CNC work for other people, which is great and it gives us a lot of uh, different media to work on. So we've ended up having to cut everything from very thin plastic right up to 25 millimeter thick aluminium when needed. So as you can imagine, this spindle has been put through its paces in the last 12 months or so, in fact, probably about 18 months now. Uh, so we've got a good handle on what it can and can't do. Now, the reason we've got this particular spindle is because uh, I killed the last one. And if you haven't seen that video, CNC spindle killer, I'll put a link up somewhere, probably at the end of the video anyway. Um, please go and watch it because if you're looking to add one of these to your uh, machine or indeed have one already and you're not following the guidelines, you'll find a lot of information on that particular video very useful. So I do highly recommend it. Okay, let's just do a couple of quick facts on the machine itself, on the spindle itself. This is, as I said, the Vevor 2.2 kilowatt water-cooled spindle. It has an 80 millimeter diameter, and that was one of the factors for our purchasing it, because it had to go in the collar we already had fitted on the machine. Um, it comes with two water inlets and outlets, the standard eight millimeter tubing. Now then, I did hope when I bought it that the connections on the top were fairly standard. As it turned out, they are not. And I suspect that each manufacturer has slight variations on their own uh, models. So uh, from our perspective, it involved me actually doing some basic rewiring soldering. If you've not got one of these and you're looking to add one to your machine, then it will include some basic soldering and rewiring. It's not that difficult, honestly. If I can do it, anyone can. Anyway, it wasn't quite as plug and play as I'd hoped. Um, I bought the spindle on its own and I'm aware there are people who sell kits out there because uh, you will need some other bits to go with it if you're buying one of these. Um, very important is this one takes ER20 collets. Uh, so you need some of those and then they come in different sizes if you didn't already know that and some ER20 nuts. Uh, as I say, none of those came with it, so I had to buy them separately. Um, well, in fact, they came with the machine when I bought them and I've just added to it. As I've gone on, I've added Imperial and I now have uh, a multitude of the nuts because it's handy to have the collets ready to go. So as I'm picking different sizes, I just grab the, uh, the right, right one, put it in, saves a bit of time. All about saving time in this business. And uh, so the other thing you're going to need is, you're going to need one of them. Yeah, one of them, that's a spanner for an ER20. Can you read that? Help with the right way up, John. ER20 collar. And then you're gonna need one of these. Mine says US Pro on the front, and yet it's a 21 millimeter. I always thought the state was all Imperial. Anyway, a 21 millimeter uh, spanner. The 21 millimeter spanner goes on the top of the, of the collar on the machine, just tighten that. And then obviously the, uh, Collet spanner goes on the collet itself, um, but you'll definitely need those. If you're not buying a kit as well, you will need a water cool system, which you need to make millimeter tube in, and you will need a suitable water pump. It's like an aquarium type pump, and obviously some container to put your water in. Now, as I said, I did buy this in a hurry. The important criteria for me was how fast I could get one delivered, rather than spending any time deciding which one was going to be the most appropriate. I dare say if I'd had more time to deliberate over it, I may have opted to go elsewhere, but time was pressing. I just had to get on with it. Okay, so finding one more or less like for like straight swap so I could get going again. 
The spindle itself uh, apparently operates at 7,000 to 24,000 RPM. I don't know how accurate that is. I can only tell you that that's what uh, the manufacturers tell me and that's what it reads out on the VFD when I get it going. Now, Vevor is a brand that I'd heard of. I was a little bit skeptical to start with when they, I first saw the websites popping up with the, the product on there, products on there, because they seem to have a, a diverse catalogue. And I, my first opinion was, was it one of these scam websites that popped up? But it turns out it's not the case. It's just uh, a Chinese businessman has decided to set up a brand and he's buying in products from all over the place and selling them under his own brand name. That simple. It's just like, you know, big box stores, uh, what they do with their stuff. So in that regard, technically, it's just a generic Chinese spindle. Did some tests on it a little while ago where I was trying to see what the runoff was at the pointy end, which is obviously the important part. Admittedly, it was out without any bits in, so it was just the machine running empty, just to try and work out if there was any issues there, just to see if I could get any indication of the accuracy of it. Um, I did film it. I don't know how well it's come out. If it's come out any good and it's readable, I'll put it on the screen somewhere around me so you can see it as it's going. Uh, the problem I had was, even with a magnetic um, clamp, the, the bars I've got in here weren't big enough really for the clamp, so there may be some slight movement in the machine, it's in the indicator itself. But needless to say, even with that, the runoff was with, well within a few thousands of a millimeter, which I think is pretty good for a spindle at this sort of price bracket. As I say, how much difference it is when you put a bit in there, I don't know. I've not yet found a way to actually stick an indicator on while the bit's in place. But if I do, I'll give it a go. Big sheets of, of aluminium, and in all that time, we've never had any problems with any runoff or any um, significant changes, shall we say, in the diameters, not diameters, dimensions, in the dimensions. I'm doing diameters because I cut flipping circles this morning. I tried cutting circles on thin sheet. God. Anyway, dimensions. Our parts were dimensionally accurate repeatedly and that's the important part yeah and then bearing in mind that on a uh, thin sheet material even with a vacuum bed as fitted on this doesn't always hold down that well and sometimes vibrates uh, and that can cause uh, parts to move out of alignment it's one of the biggest headaches i have um, so i can honestly say any issues that we have had have been user error <coughs> I wish I could point the finger at someone else. User error, me, not sticking the part down correctly or some other problem I've dialed in myself. One thing I have noticed, and that is at a mid speeds, at about 12 to 14,000, there is a change in tone of the spindle that I can hear. Now, to be fair, I pay more attention to it when I'm warming up and I'm going through the steps up to that speed, as mentioned in the spindle killer video. Um, when I'm cutting, I haven't noticed it, but perhaps my focus is on other things at that time anyway, and I'm not paying as much attention to the spindle at that point. But at about 12 to 14,000 on warm up, I can hear a slight change in tone. Uh, and that's the only sort of issue I found in the spindle itself in the time we've been using it. Now, whether that does correlate to um, any change in the operation of the, the spindle, I have no idea. It's never been evident in any of the cuts we've done when we've had to cut stuff at those sort of speeds. Um, but to be fair, most of the time we're running it at the top end because we're using single flutes, which like to be run at the higher speeds anyway. Now then, I don't know what the lifespan of the said spindle should be. I guess it's down to how much you use it to some extent. Now, someone did point out in the previous video that I shouldn't maybe run it at full speed all the time. And in fact, running it about 80% is a better idea. Thank you for that comment taken on board and we will do so in future. It isn't going to make a huge difference to our cuts. Had the pain of killing one previously, I don't want it to happen again. But I would honestly say if I get another 12 months out of this, it's earned its money in that regard. But I genuinely hope it does go on just a little bit longer, just because. And, and to give you an idea of how much we use it, and again, you need to consider this with your throughput. If you're running yours for eight hours a day solid, cutting wood cabinets and MDF all day long, then maybe this isn't perhaps the right uh, spindle and something a bit more heavy duty might be appropriate but we're cutting mostly in the mornings we might do several sheets of aluminium get multiple parts ready before we then switch to forming and cleaning and shaping them uh, and packing etc um, if you're using even less then again it should last even longer 
if you use it appropriately. So basically, in summary, as I've previously stated on this video, uh, for those of you who continue to watch, it is, you know, at its price point, a very capable spindle. And I describe it as a good entry-level general purpose CNC spindle. And at the price point, it's also good for doing some of the heavy duty work that you might occasionally need. You know, if you've got to do through uh, several MDF, inch thick MDF boards, you know this is going to handle it adequately. So here's where I throw it back to you. If you've got one of these, or you're thinking about uh, upgrading to one of these, and you've been researching it, please do leave a comment below, ask some questions, more than happy to answer. We do read them all and we do appreciate them. Uh, but we will do our best to help anyone we can. Well, I think that just about wraps up today's video. I do hope the information and my experiences of the spindle have been useful to you. And as always, give it a thumbs up if it was. And if you feel inclined, why not hit the subscribe button? Because you never know what useless inf useful information I may provide in the future. Thank you for watching. Take care. We'll see you soon.